it's Caitlin. So, Monster High week. Uh, I hope it's been going fairly well. I know it's not. <laughs> I know not many people are into Monster High as they are, like, just pops in general and stuff. But, you know, the things that people come to my uh, channel to see. Um, but honestly, I like doing this kind of stuff. I've realized that. And I might continue to do it, like, not with Monster High. I might do a few Monster High videos in the future, who knows. But, uh, I'm thinking about going ahead and doing it throughout the fandoms, like, maybe put a week out there where I talk about Power Rangers, like, show off my Power Ranger stuff and maybe talk about the franchise and, you know, do the same thing with, like, Pokemon or something. Let me know what you guys think about that before we get into anything else. But, in this video, we've, we've gone over my collection of Monster High figures and stuff, uh, that I own, uh, and some that I want. <laughs> So, in this one, I want to talk about the series overall, and what happened between the original series and the reboot series, why Monster High ended, like, just full-on ended, and what I think could have been done differently in order to save Monster High. So, <clears throat> when I was a kid growing up, one of the things that I got into, and would later become a very secret guilty pleasure in my teenage years, was Barbie movies and then later Bratz movies. I loved them. I don't know why, but I loved them. There was a part of it that was just fantasy, but not Disney. Now don't get me wrong, I love Disney. I always have. But these movies had a bit of a different feel to it. I don't know, the animation was very different in them than they were at in Disney movies at the time, and they just kind of fascinated me. Now, I wasn't as much into Barbies as a kid as I was into Bratz. I loved Bratz. I wanted every single doll <laughs> that they made. Um, I remember I actually got into them at an age where most girls were aging out of dolls, honestly, uh, out of fashion dolls, probably about preteen-ish. Um, and a lot of my family hated it. <laughs> that should have been their first clue that this was going to happen one day. <laughs> but, but I've always just been into it. And I've never really got out of it. I mean, I'm not, I don't watch Barbie movies or uh, Bratz movies. You know, every now and then I might. Every few years, maybe. <laughs> but Monster High. When Monster High came around, I was actually not watching anything like that in a long time. They came out in 2010, so I wasn't a sophomore in high school. I had no idea what Monster High was back then. I think I discovered Monster High when I was actually in college, which again, I was kind of laying off. I was still watching them every now and then. It was a very guilty pleasure, but I wasn't. it wasn't something I was doing every day. And it was something that I was kind of growing out of at the same time uh, around then. But when I found Monster High, Honestly, I thought it was the most, or one of the most ingenious things ever. If you look at all the different aspects of Monster High, if you look at the toys, first and foremost, because it was Mattel, that's how they make money with their toy lines. The movies that spun from it, and the webisodes that from, spun from it. It was just a very well-made series. So basically, Monster High, if you guys haven't gathered yet, were about the children of classic horror characters, classic monster characters, all coming together to kind of live a normal teenage life, or as normal as they could get, in a pl place, in a school where they could just be teenagers, and hang out, and, you know, just do what human kids were doing, just with their own little flair. And that was really what Monster High was about, was being normal when you're abnormal, which... Maybe that resonated with me a little bit with the, as a gay kid. <laughs> but I think it was amazing. Monster High actually touched on a bunch of social issues, including racial discrimination a lot of the time. And it all came back around to being, even though you're different, you can still be accepted and you shouldn't have to hide who you are no matter what. Even if you're a different species, you can still be friends and family. <coughs> family. Now... That might not be a big thing, because a lot of kids' shows are like that. But 
Monster High was a show where you didn't ha have to be a kid to like it. There were a lot of adults that got into it at the same time that their children were. And a lot of the adults are actually still into Monster High. A lot of the kids grew out of it, kind of like how I did for a few years, and then Monster High swept me back in. <laughs> but, but it was amazing that just so many people were into this. There were people, there were families going out doll hunting together to find these find these toys and you know sitting down together and watching these movies and it was amazing and Monster High boomed for Mattel and one of the reasons why other than the movies and the webisodes which were very well written and well animated we also had the doll lines now the doll lines I've said before in the other episodes were incredible they took something that was usually just a flat out mold that they used for all their characters you know in their Barbie lines every Barbie has the, had the same facial sculpt every Barbie had the same body type until the uh, curvy and petite and all that fashionistas came into the world but most of the time it was just the exact same molds for all characters Monster High changed that and it brought these characters to life in a whole new way when it comes to toys. I mean, think about Funko Pops. In the ba back in the olden days, all Funko Pops had the same kind of body style. They had the, they still have the about same head shape as they used to, or they did before. They've changed a little bit. But the body styles on all Pops were like this. And then Funko evolved into making them more uh, precise to each character. And that's what Monster High did from the beginning. And it was just amazing. The clothing was ama amazing. The sculpting was amazing. The price on most of them were amazing. And it was just a very fun thing to get into. Now, there was a reboot, <laughs> however. So, Monster High was making millions of dollars for Mattel from about the year, for about four or five years. But then they started seeing a decline. And here's what happened. <laughs> So in the Mattel boardroom, when they were talking to their stockholders or whatever, they were saying, we want to redo the series because we've gotten concerns from parents that the monsters are a little bit creepy, the dolls are scary, so we're gonna redo it and make it more cutesy and, you know, new animation style to make it even more cartoony, even though it was already a cartoon. But... <laughs> Make it more cartoony, I don't know. Uh, and then make it more kawaii and all that crap. What really was going on was that kids were growing up. Again, a lot of the adults that got into Monster High or, you know, older teens like me, we were, get, we were still into Monster High. We still are into Monster High. We still like it. But a lot of the little kids that had it when they were like 10, 10, 8, 8, 10, something like that, they were growing up. And they didn't want it anymore. <laughs> you're not into the same stuff. When you're 8 years old, you're not into the same stuff when you're like 15, 16. So, as you're growing up, you just get out of it. And the kids that are coming in right after them, like their little siblings or whatever, there's, stuff, there's new stuff coming up for them too. They probably don't want their older brother, older sister's hand-me-down dolls. Or hand-me-down toys. They want their own toys. They want to get into their own stuff. So Monster High was declining just because people were getting out of it, <laughs> honestly. There are some franchises that can stick around for generations and generations, some of them that just can't, and honestly, most of the time when it's about a toy line, very rarely does it last that long. Uh, when you think of characters like Spongebob or, you know, Power Rangers even, Power Rangers changes every year nowadays, so they get the opportunity to bring in a whole new audience. or no, I guess not every year, about every two or three years now. But they get a chance to bring in a new audience every time that they bring out a new series. And with something like Spongebob, they've never really relied on toys as much as they just rely on the show. So the show keeps going, it keeps produ producing new episodes, and the kids that are growing up get into it just like the kids before them did. But with Monster High being so toy-focused and not changing that much, 
they weren't keeping up with the kids coming in. So basically what they wa wanted to do was take the original plot, change it up a little bit, bring, take out some old characters, bring in some new, and hope that that would save the franchise. They were wrong. So <laughs> the plot of the original Monster High series was basically you had a school that has been there for years that monsters could come to again just to pretty much just go to school in their own weird kind of way <laughs> um like monster high it had a school pool that was as deep as an ocean and you had to use a scuba diving suit if you wanted to get to the bottom and even the people who the students who were sea creatures didn't want to even go to the bottom because there was a kraken down there <laughs> but and you know all the coffins were locker shit or all the lockers were coffin shaped and they we had they had the craft creepateria rather than their cafeteria or casket ball rather than basketball it was just this weird little thing and they were it was right next to a graveyard it was built on top of catacombs it was awesome <laughs> it's every kid's dream to go to monster high i think um but basically it was just all these kids coming in from most of them from around the world because they knew this school existed and it was a way for them to live outside of human world and not interact with them even though when they in the movies where they go outside monster eye like there's hardly any humans like everyone's a monster but whatever there were some humans in the show but or in the series but not very many um but yeah it was meant to just be a place that has more or less always been there in fact in one of the movies in freaky fusion they there's actually a scene where they go back in time and they see their teacher being a student at monster high um as well as some other people from their past but uh in the reboot however we see draculara who would become the new uh kind of the new uh star of the show i'll get to that in a minute but we have Draculaura living in a huge castle with just her and her dad, Dracula. And all monsters live separately from each other and they live secretly from each other and humans. No interaction between monsters whatsoever. One day she me she out flying in her bat form and she runs into this uh, old power plant where Frankie Stein is living. So she meets Frankie. Not too long after that, they meet Claudine in her little uh, werewolf pack. And the three of them together decide to take Draculaura's house, with permission from her dad, <laughs> and turn it into a school so all monsters can come together and just be together. Not having to hide anymore, not having to stay socially distant. <laughs> I didn't realize the irony in that until I saw, until I was had it in my head. But yeah, uh, but moving on from that. So in the reboot, we actually get to see the school being made pretty much by the students, which was really interesting. So and it's not too long uh, until they find Cleo and Laguna. Now, the way they find it, Dracula gives them a device, which I can't remember the name of it. But it was the Monster High Skelet. The Skelet is the logo for Monster High. Just a cute little skull with a pink bow on it. It's always been the logo for the entire series. But here, it becomes a tool for something them to use. And I did like that. Something that is very iconic for the franchise suddenly becomes something more... It's more than just a logo. It's actually like a tool that they use. Which I thought was very clever, honestly. And they use this thing to teleport around the world to find monsters to bring them to Monster High. And so you see this school forming, you see these friendships forming, you see these bonds forming, and it's honestly very incredible. The idea of that is way better than what it was before. <laughs> way better than what it was before, where it was just, okay, we're going on vacation, and then they run into whatever, something kind of trouble like there is a ghost that's wanting to kidnap them so they can turn so sh she can take their fashion ideas and get rich off of it yeah that was a thing but <laughs> so it there was definitely an adventure aspect to the old original series but there was a more adventurous and almost more 
thrilling, I want to say, uh, to the new one. But even with good changes comes bad ones. And one of them was the characters. So some of the characters that left the show, or was written out of it, uh, one was Gulia, like I've mentioned before. Gulia was my favorite. She was a fan favorite. Everyone loved Gulia. <laughs> Everyone loved Gulia. She was, you know, part of the main ghouls, even without being... It never said that she was, but we all knew it, because she's been there from the beginning. And everyone just fell in love with her. But they dropped her. They dropped Claude, who was Claudine's uh, older brother. They dropped Heath, which was kind of like the... If you guys ever watched uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, kind of like Bulk and Skull, the comic relief, <laughs> what Heath Burns was. Uh, Jackson Jekyll Holtide, Spectra, uh, who I mentioned in my first video. I, know, I don't think I mentioned her in the second, but I mentioned her in the first video. But all these characters were fan favorites, honestly. I mean, I know the ones that got me were definitely Gulia and Jackson Jekyll and Holtide. Those were the ones I missed the most when it came to the new series. Now, they did bring back a lot of new characters, I mean, a lot of old fan favorite characters in the new series, like Abby and Operetta and Gil, but didn't give them near as much screen time <laughs> as they did before, which kind of was sad. And they did introduce new characters, the most prominent being Monica Decay. Monica was the new zombie character, so she was kind of like Gulia's replacement. But the reason they wanted to bring her in was so sh they could have a villain for the series. So, before, every movie had its pretty much own determined villain. So, instead, instead of having one prominent villain that they're constantly facing off of, they just had one bad guy that they would randomly run into <laughs> sometime during the movie. Um, but with Monica, she was meant to be the adversary for out. And a lot of people like that idea. A lot of people like that idea to see what happens. To really, They had the potential to really build up a story with them. Bring new characters in on both sides, maybe. Some people on Monica's side, some people on Dracula's. It was really interesting, honestly. And I like the idea of a main villain. Um, and I think if they got the opportunity to go forward, I think we would have gotten an amazing story of Monica. Because her thing was that she hated humans. She hated humans, she hated the idea of monsters being with humans, which was the ultimate goal of Monster High. After reuniting all the monsters, they were wanting to get into the human world to bring them back. to merge their worlds together as well um and she hated that <laughs> so she was trying to foil uh dracula and frankie's plans all the time now the swap between frankie and dracula is one i get but i don't understand so in the original series frankie was the main character so to speak it was it was the five ghouls but frankie was the most prominent out of all of them and then in the reboot, like I said, Dracula was more prominent. Um, and I guess it kind of gave them an opportunity to kind of explore Frankie a little bit more. Frankie became way more of a science nerd after this. We saw Frankie more as just like the leader slash clumsy girl out of all of them. Ghoul out of all of them. But we never really got to see her as the science nerd, which makes sense for her character. But her and Laguna, Laguna was the sporty one. She was constantly talking about sports, but it wasn't until the reboot that we actually got to see her really participate more in sports. So the reboot did give them an opportunity to kind of explore these characters in a way they just didn't bother to do before. So again, I do like that part of it. What I don't like is how they were trying to force familial unions here so before the reboot out of the main ghouls the only one that had siblings was uh claudine because she had she's a wolf wolf 
wolves have litters of puppies, so it makes sense that she has siblings. With Dracula, they introduced a younger sister named Fangelica. And with uh, Frankie, they introduced a younger sister named Olivia. Yeah, that is horrible. I know. But one thing I never understood, I like Fang Fangelica was okay. Because Fangelica was kind of like uh, an adoption, kind of. They just kind of found Ang Fangelica while they were searching for other uh, monsters to find at school. And she was an orphan, so Dracula kind of took her in. But with Olivia, Frankie just wanted a sister for the hell of it. <laughs> so she made her. I, I honestly want to ask the people behind Mattel who, who wrote this particular webisode, because it happened in the webisode. It didn't happen in the movie. I want to ask them, was this kind of like a thing for teen moms? I honestly want to know. Because... In order for Olivia to be her sister, her parents would have to have been the ones that had made her. But if Frankie makes her, Olivia is her daughter. That's the way I think of it. I don't know. But it was really weird when I saw it. Uh, yeah. But it was just kind of weird. Really kind of weird. But one of the biggest downfalls for Monster Eye in the toy... Thing again and I think I said this before the quality of the dolls went downhill there was still different facial sculpts for all of them but they just weren't as distinct as the other as they used to be and also the joint quality of the dolls went downhill used to Monster High would be uh, jointed um, at the torso some of the times and then also at the elbow wrist knee uh, thigh and uh, for the boys, they were also articulated in the ankle. But in the newer rebooted dolls, for some reason, they took away a lot of the articulation. I mean, it was to save money. We know that. And the sculpts on them, again, they weren't as distinct as they were before. So a lot of people didn't like it. The quality of the printing on the clothes went down. The packaging were no longer, like, coffin-shaped or fun sh or, you know, any. It was just a standard box now. Um, which was okay, but it definitely wasn't as eye-catching as the original boxes were and packagings were. And they also brought in a few dolls that no one really understood why. I mean, suddenly, uh, Cleo has a doll pack that has a brother and a sister in it. Or I think a brother and two sisters. But who are they? Well, we can read their little bios on the back of the package, but other than that, they were never introduced in the in the, either in the web series or in any of the movies and it was just kind of weird every time we got a character in the old series the original series of monster Eye, every time where there was a character as a doll we got a story with it whether again whether it be in the webisodes or whether it be in the movies we got something even a little something from them but they just created these dolls for the hell of it and never gave us an explanation as to why which if you're a little kid playing with it I don't think you really care but if you're trying not only to look into a new audience but also maybe win back some of the old one you know maybe some of the kids haven't quite grown out of it yet and you're still trying to hang on to them that's not really a way to do it so I don't really understand why they did that and plus they brought back like Claude in doll form they gave Claude a new doll for the reboot again never explained what happened to him in the series or how he's just here they also made one of Gulia. Gulia I can understand because it was an SDCC exclusive with Cleo as a two-pack and SDCC they can just you know do something crazy with it that they know is gonna sell but the biggest downfall I don't really think the reboot was all that bad the toy quality definitely went down. They never should have messed with the quality of the dolls. At all. Uh, they, I think that was their biggest downfall, honestly. But when it comes to really how they could have saved it, because they had a good story. Getting, getting to see the school being rebuilt was amazing. Bringing in some really beloved characters, like again, Abby and Operetta, was incredible. Introducing new characters like Monica and they also introduced uh, 
Ari Huntington, which was the new ghost character. And she was kind of meant to be more of the liaison between, like, humans and monsters in a way, because she was a ghost that posed as a human. Um, and she was a performer, so she was, she was a singer, so she would go around singing. And by the end of that, in the movie that she was introduced, uh, she was actually going around in her ghost form. People thought it was a costume, but it was kind of a leeway into bringing the humans into the monster world and the monsters into the human world. So they had a good plot, honestly. They had adventures with the whole teleporting around the world and rescuing monsters from wherever they are and bringing them to Monster High to form this gigantic group. They were, it was amazing. It honestly was. It had a lot of potential. But it happened too soon. Basically what happened, the last of the original Monster High movies, everyone can pretty much agree it was horrible. It was horrible. And it released, I want, it was definitely, I want to say it was like March 2016, was when the last original movie released, okay? The toys were coming out, the new rebooted toys were actually coming out before that. Everyone knew the reboot was happening. But they knew that Great Scary Reef was going to be the last of the original Monster High movies. Welcome to Monster High, the first reboot movie, came out September that same year. What, about six months? Why? <laughs> Everyone was disappointed in Great Scary Reef. I mean, it's okay if you're watching it just once, but it's not something you would want to watch every, <laughs> every week or anything. Um... And then, I think people were just really disappointed in that. And so, their hopes were more low for the reboot. Like, if this is what they're ending this part on, is the other one even going to be really all that good? And I think people were just, their aspects were expectations were low. And there just wasn't a lot of time in between it. <laughs> at all. That was the biggest thing. People were already disappointed in the new quality of the dolls, the new quality of the series, the new quality of the movies, that when this new one came out, they're just like, alright, we'll look at it, but there's nothing, it was different, there was still a sense of familiarity with it, but it just wasn't dynamic enough to do it. It wasn't different enough to bring in the new generation of kids coming into it. But it also wa wasn't the same enough to hold on to their original audience. <coughs> <coughs> and there just wasn't a lot of time. At all. Here's what I think Monster Eye should have done. I think they should have found a way to close off the series. Not with Grey Scare Your Reef, because it was just a random... It was, it was just like all the movies that came before it, honestly where it's just sort of like a random plot thrown into Monster High World. It's not an end of a story. The very first movie, it, was a, it wasn't a movie, it was like a 30 minute show that they aired on TV before it went to like the internet webisodes. And then later on the straight to DVD uh, hour long movie, hour, hour and a half long movies. In the beginning, first one, we get to see Frankie going to Monster High for the first time. She's a brand new student. She's a brand new person. She's 16 days old. <laughs> so we get to see a start to the series. We did not get to see an end to it. Laguna overcoming her stage fright. Yeah, it's about time we finally got a Laguna-centered movie that was actually centered on Laguna and not Frankie. But this was not good. <laughs> it was not good. It wasn't an end to a series. And people just did not like it. They needed to close out the series with an ending and then they should have stopped everything maybe put out m dolls for like SDCC because everyone loved them you know maybe make a new blind bag toy if the Monster High Minis stop selling well try to make another one every now and then but don't keep producing this stuff just to try to hold on to something that they knew at one time made money and they're trying to squeeze every last penny they could out of it. That's why they rebooted it in the first place, honestly. Was just trying to squeeze every last penny they could out of consumers. In what actuality, if they waited a few years, 
had people, everyone would have been just as disappointed as they were uh, when the reboot stopped. Which, by the way, the reboot lasted for about a year. We got two movies out of it. They were okay. Neither of them were spectacular, but they were okay. But people were disappointed when the reboot stopped, but they weren't surprised at all. If they had stopped the original series, people would have been very disappointed. A lot of kids would have been disappointed, a lot of adults would have been disappointed. But they just stopped it right there, and then, again, maybe make some SDCC exclusives every year, at the very least. But then wait several years, at least, I would say, five to eight years. So maybe in a year or two from now, I would say, say and then say, Mattel would be like, okay guys, we're making a new Monster High series. We got a new plot, we've been working on it for several years, it would have given them time to really work up and see if they can bring in these characters that everyone loved in a way that would still fit the new plot. And I think the excitement level would have been through the roof. They would have had a brand new ser brand new group of kids growing into the age where they wanted to play with dolls and watch these movies and you also had the parents and the young adults who had the memories of collecting these dolls either when they were younger or with their friends and they would have wa wa uh, they would have checked out the reboot just to check it out just for that nostalgic factor and you might have gotten a lot of new or they may have gotten a lot of new customers based off of it I think that's what should have happened. A closing for the original series, a wait period. I mean, I know I would have been pissed off when I, if they had told me Monster High was ending after Great Scary Reef, I would have been pissed off. I really would have. I would have been so disappointed. But I can imagine there are people right now who are begging Monster High to come back, even after the reboot. If they had waited a little bit longer, and those same people knew Monster High was being relaunched, they would jump on it. They would spread the word. There would be YouTube videos galore about it. And the I think it could have saved the brand. I really do. Would it have ever been as good as it was originally? Who knows? But I honestly think if they had just waited, they could have fixed it. They could have saved it. And we would have had a brand new story with an ending because it just wasn't selling people weren't into it anymore they missed the old monster high they didn't really give the reboot a chance it just sort of ended off the quality of the toys were bad compared to the old ones no one was investing in monster high anymore and that's why it died if they had given it some time that excitement would have shot through the roof with the announcement that monster high was coming back I think that could have saved the entire franchise. And who knows, it might happen again, but honestly with the reboot already happened, <laughs> the reboot's already happened, it would be kind of hard to do it again, unless they did it with a different aspect, like the ghouls are, I don't know, they're stopping the teleporting thing and just traveling the world together, I don't know. <laughs> It's gonna be hard if they ever do decide to bring back Monster High. Uh, maybe if they just bring back the dolls, that'll be one thing. They can sell it to the kids and again, the collectors of Monster High. But it'd be kind of hard to bring back up a brand new story with it after dropping the ball <laughs> the way they did. If they weren't so eager to keep Monster High alive back in 2015, 2016, and just had patience to wait for a good time to bring it back, they could have made a lot more money on it than they did, on the reboot than they did. But that's my opinion on it. For those of you who have stuck by me this week and have watched all this and maybe you were Monster High fans in the beginning, let me know what you guys think because I'm curious. Again, I don't think the reboot was bad. I think we all just missed the original Monster High more <laughs> than we liked the reboot. But if we had had a period to wait and be like, I'm just glad to see these guys again. I think it would have been amazing. And if they didn't drop the quality of the toys. But 
let me know what you guys th think. I'm very curious. So, hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this week. I know it was different, and I know a lot of people, again, weren't aren't very into Monster High, and I understand it. Um, but I love it, so thank you. For those watching this right now, thank you for <laughs> sticking by me and watching it. And again, I think I might go ahead. It's not going to be anytime soon. Just like whenever the hell I feel like it. Bring some of my, you know, Power Ranger stuff out and, you know, just talk about Power Ranger stuff or Pokemon stuff or Sailor Moon or whatever. So, get set for that. <laughs> And, again, let me know your opinions on all this stuff. Uh, any of the stuff that I've talked about in any of my videos this week. Any toys that you guys have. Any memories that you guys have of Monster High. And, uh, thank you guys for watching. Remember, like always, it's a community, not a competition. I'll see y'all later. Bye.